Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning and welcome to the participants today and those that are online. Thank you for attending, taking time off uh, in the talk so in our series of uh, seminars at the Center of Excellence. Uh, today, our speaker is uh, Wendy. She has an interesting uh, profile. She's currently based at the First National Bank, SNB. Am I correct? Uh, previously, she's been at the CSIR, so she's been around. And uh, her university used to be the Dunsa up in the north, north part of the world. Uh, my topic will be around machine learning. And I should have, I should have remembered the topic title, but anyway, you'll tell us about it. Uh, I hand you over to Wendy. Thank you, everyone. I'm very excited to be here. My name is Wendy Stewart, and now I'm in your office. So today I was making the last talk on the introduction to the company part of machine learning. Um, I'll be going over the important thing and its application, um, what is the machine learning, how we have um, the return to optimize all the machine learning models and also how they are doing that. Um, we can apply even to the neural network and we can try and watch it in the screen. So, oftentimes when we deal with machine learning, we also um, have an application in that we can use um, to know the same kind of machine learning to try to use the application in the same way. Uh, machine learning um, machine learning is applied in the bank. Um, one example to that is when you do like a few application online for a loan. We will try to apply a loan to online and then we get a pre-approval whether we meet the minimum requirements or not. Um machine learning is also applied to the manufacturing um industry to sort of the quality assurance of the product as they move from one um line to the next area. Machine learning um, also can be applied in the healthcare um industry um sort of how um our healthcare professionals to detect um via TV, for example, music cancer can track um the health center or not or the um the area where the cancer is being detected as well. Um also in automotive industry and the which is very trying to sort of incorporate more activities to go to help us do some work and also in some chatbots where we be having um we just communicating with a machine learning agent where we want to get into some maybe asking some question example of this was we had um it should be to be ready to ask some um, question and then it will give you um the answer but it will find um this um interaction between you and radio screen or between you and the other um complete device as um what we call a machine learning algorithm by definition machine learning as um to define as a subgroup of AI that um uh, enables uh computer programs to learn from data um and the resulting of um the learned problem from data was called machine learning model and the one that is used as a computer to make some decision. So if you can see what happens that we throw in some input as you can see we can do some um learn application online put in some input and then as an output it gives you a response to um the two or or it did not get to approve. But um this um machine learning algorithm goes through um various um stages. Um one of the stages the um the data for you to train um a model or a machine learning model you need um data so you need to validate you need to buy data and do some data analysis um I can think of it you can see the data that um or you have all of the data of the data whether it's more they need to find ways to um 
uh, our goal for us is to learn a model which um, can be defined as a computationally significant description of the data that we can then use to produce um, our new label um, one head given the new set of um, set of data as the expert. So if if we choose um, our naming model to be a linear model, then we can have um, a computation that's given by um, a linear equation, say our output, we can use our f of x and w, which is my um, our feature group x some rules plus and wires and for and to see I guess I'm doing the fire and the community of the community. So um what um that X um the X has done to have some of the different um S for X I is one um, the way W um, X I T and all the way up to X I of the system the way of the X of the system. But then the question is that how do we assume that the person we have a big X and Y? How do we choose the best way of our way such that if we can increase our input x, and then we can give us um, our space um, y. Okay. Now, how can we um, find the value of, like, how do we choose the value of our w or our weight such that when we are giving it, um, our new input x, then we can get the value which is as close proximity to our, our expected label y hat. So um, to, to know if um, we, like how we can choose the value of our w or to know f first if our the current w that we chose is, is the right um, or it gives us the the right um, or the correct prediction of uh, or gives us the expected prediction given our um, x input, we can um, um, find the difference between um, our given value or of w i, which is the one we we know we expected, and then we we subtract the previous w which we learned, which is the one we approximated given by um, x, feature x times our weight. And then the difference in that is gonna tell us if our predicted that the w is the, is the correct w or not. If maybe for instance, we have um, our difference y, y i minus y hat to be maybe high, maybe let's say it gives us, um, uh, let's say our y, our w i is one, and then our difference y i minus that new w maybe say it gives us zero point zero nine. We know that um that difference is high. Maybe we will expect either zero or zero point zero one. So we want something as much close to zero as as possible. So what we can use is we can um find um we can find um. We can therefore look for method to find our YW such that um, R or R squared is its minimum. So um, to find um, y, y or to find WY such that, um, to find that W such that our residual um, R or our residual squared R is minimum we can look at um, some optimization um, method. So if from previous lecture, previous slide, if 
um, W is given by the arc minimum of Y um, of that equation. Therefore, we can let um, uh, our JW, which is our cost function, to be equal to the value in um, the arc minimum. And then we can use what we call um, the gradient descent, or we can look at like some optimization method that um, to find our W. And one example of the optimization method that we can use, which we'll be using this, uh, I'm referring to in this um, talk is the gradient descent. Um, so um, the gradient descent is an, it's a type of optimization method that is um, given by um, the following equation our um, the next um, W um, which we can get um, that can minimize our uh, we hope can minimize our cost function is given by um, the value of the previous um, W um, minus um, some lambda times um, the derivative of the cost um, function. Is given for. Therefore, if we find the derivative of the cost function um, that is defined above, then it's given by this particular equation two times x um, transpose times x times the weight w minus two x transpose times um, y. Therefore, we can um, use that um, to plug it into our equation to, to get a new value of W. So um, this um, uh, method of the gradient descent, um, pictorially, uh, if we put it like into a, a figure, um, is often um, defined as, as um, the image as shown in this, um, in this figure. So what we are trying to, to do here is that if we have our initial W, which is somewhere a little bit above, so we wanna find an optimal W or the minimum W in that lower level. So we keep, um, we keep re-alterating and finding the new W up until we, we can get um, a W which is um, at the lower um, level, which is um, the same principle that has been used in most of um, machine learning um, techniques. So um, in, in machine learning, um, one of type of algorithm that have been um, used a lot or has been making um, a lot of um, new development with like um, prediction that are um, mostly accurate or close to um, the human prediction are called as some neural um, network. Neural network are a type of machine learning that um, are biologically inspired. Uh, by that means that, is that we have um, neural network consists of um, nodes of layers um, where each layer is trying to learn a new um, feature space that um, contain some important feature can, that can be used to predicting our um, output. So if we define the neural network to have um, um, the real layer as shown below. So if we have our input um, features and then we define the neural network, then we can have it our neural network as um, a function that says it takes in the input and then it multiply with some weights to get into the value of um, on the new feature or a new nodes. So the XI um, level, they're called the input um, features or node one sometimes or node zero. And then the FZ is the node um, node one. And then the G, 
one are I call them the node two, and then the age is our uh, node three. So um, how this can be represented is that if the output of the previous layer becomes the input of the of the next layer, therefore this output of the new layer is a new feature to the um to the input of the new node. So it has to have um this the size which um takes in um this the amount of um the input size, but then the feature column, they, they can sort of gradually um, get reduced. And how that I mean is that if um, in, in our layer one, like our Z1 in that previous layer is denoted by X times weight one, and therefore that X times weight one can be fit into that node, which we, we typically call it the activation function to give us um, the new output and then the new output in in that um, node is going to be um, n times three where the maybe it's gonna be n, n times m and then our m is denoted by the size of our our weight um, vector. So here our weight vector was size p times three therefore in in, in our new feature space, we have n times p. And then in the second, yeah, in the second layer of the neural network, then we have the weight size that kind of, it also reduces to the new, um, the new size of, of the input features. In, in the first layer, maybe we have size p features. If, our P feature, maybe let's say we had four four P feature column, then we, we were gonna have N times four. And then if we reduce those by um one feature column, and then the the output of the new layer, it has to be um the size of N times um um times the feature columns of the of the of our given um Weights. In this case, our weight was um, three by four, where um, three by two, where two was our features. Therefore, um, our new feature space has n times two. So, um, and then our output uh, or our final layer in this case has um, it gives us only um, one one feature column or all the prediction layer, which is gives us the prediction of the length n times one. So do you have the, the code? Uh, uh, you don't have it? Oh, okay, so I was hoping to show, demonstrate um, what I mean by this in, in your code, but um we haven't tested the environment for for it but then the same um prop um so updating the way so the, okay the question is okay if if we're going to have for instance in each layer we're going to have new weights of um, different um, dimension. How do we update um, those weights in, in, in each and every layer of the weights? So in here, we can also use um, the same method of the gradient descent um, where we, where in here, the, the main difference is that um, in our initial um, example in, of our linear model, our linear model is more like a, a neural network with only um, one one node. So we only update weights on um, one node. But in the case of um, um, neural network with multiple nodes, we need to update the weights of each and every node. And how that can be um, updated is that the weights of the previous nodes can be 
um, updated as used to mimic the same equation of the Gaussian um, descent, the new weight is given by the previous weight minus some lambda, lambda times the, the derivative of the cost function with respect to the weights of that previous um, um, cost function. So in, in this case, in the previous um, lecture, um, the previous slide we had our output given by our function um, G of that has some weight. And then we're going to sort of also get the weight of, um, we need um, to find the derivative of, of our cost function DW with respect to the weights. But then the DW given to the weights can be um, given with the following equation, the derivative of H, which was our output layer in um, of the neural network with respect to the weights of that layer times the derivative of, of J with respect to our output. And then the derivative of our J with respect to our output is given by this equation of um, the, the derivative of our cost function is two times y minus y hat since we are taking the derivative with respect to um, j and our j is nothing other than our y hat. So it's given by this and then we're going to find the derivative of our h with respect to, to w and the same thing happens also on the next layer. So in the next layer, we can sort of carry in the, the derivative of um, of dh over dw, but then in here we just add in the derivative of the current layer, which was g, with respect to the weights of that particular layer, and then also we're going to need to find find the derivative of the weights of the first layer with respect to to the um to um the um the f function which is was um the function that we use to get the output of of our first layer and um, finding this um derivative we can sort of we can have like multiple um, loops until we get into the last um, weight, but there are um, some methods that um, people are using to sort of, okay, when do we know how to stop if we are in machine learning? Um, because we can um, find the weights from, maybe we can keep finding, maybe the previous weight keep going down, so how are we gonna know that now? Okay, we have found our perfect weight of W that give us um, the value of the weight. So, so I was hoping to show in um, this in a demo of um, the neural network to give it um, a better illustration of what that means. But yeah, technical reason happened. So um, this will, brings me to the end of um, my talk. So thank you all for um, attending, those who are here and also those who joined online. Um, thank you so much. Um, if you have questions, you can bring them forward. Okay. Thank you so much, Wendy. I'm not sure if I'm audible, hopefully yeah. I am. Yeah. Great. Do we have any questions <laughs> in the online audience? Yeah. I'm looking at the chat. I do not see currently anything. So perhaps then over to the live audience. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I was using Python to write the code. I use Python a lot. Yes. Yes, I was using Python. So I I I did um the whole neural network just using NumPy because NumPy provides some nice um, matrix computation and vector computation. And since we are dealing with um, columns and rows, um, it makes that 
life is um, I, I wrote the code myself, but I was looking maybe some example that incorporating example of other people, but it was um, the, the code from scratch of like how defining the first layer, the second layer and the third layer and also forward and also doing the finding updating of the ways the back propagation of it not just inputting um one module that's does all of this at at once yes yes Does one develop skill to so um to sort of develop skills um maybe machine learning set skills you will need if you have like mathematical background you will need um to learn um some programming let's say you can use Python is the mostly used um, programming language. So you can use um, maybe um, online courses on machine learning, and then you, you use um, Python to do the example. But you can also um, try to sort of um, write um, those um, machine learning principles you learned in Python like maybe those um, linear equation, you can use Python to sort of write your own linear equation and see how it works, do vector multiplication and see how, um, what you get, do matrix multiplication, matrix inverse to see what you get. And you, you keep gradually um, learning and adding like more concept into it. And also just um, having uh, like the standard of, machine learning at the back of your head like for instance is it going to using um your supervised machine learning method or are you going to be using your unsupervised machine learning method um what kind of input or data format are you going to need as well as that as you continue learning with a second question eight uh, what advice would you give a person no no sorry i'm looking at the wrong one yeah i uh, know that Okay, that's the first biggest question. Yeah. That was mass of neural networks with the mass of support vector machines be similar. Um said what? So spoke essentially about the mathematics of neural uh NN. Yeah. So she's asking is the maths of SVM be similar? Yes. Um also the the method of um, also even support vector machine will be um, similar. The, the difference um, or the huge difference between uh, maybe of a linear equation or a linear model and a support vector model and the neural network model is the, is the algorithm itself or just a function, which is the algorithm is essentially a function, for instance, in a form of um, a linear equation your function was just y equals to mx plus c. And then in your form of, in, in your neural network, sort of use what we call activation function. The, no, the commonly used one is um, a sigmoid, which is given by one over one minus um, e to the power of minus x, which is a sigmoid function, x times w, which is your sigmoid function. Even in, in terms of your um, support vector machine, the support vector machine is also given by a particular um, learning function that takes in also the input of x and the output of, of y. So the updating is going to be the same format, but then computing of your gradient, the complexity of deriving a gradient is, it, it depends on also the complexity of, of the function or the algorithm or your choice of your algorithm. For instance, 
a derivative of, of a linear equation is, um, is a constant. It can be, if you find the derivative with respect to x, it's going to be your w. If you're finding derivative with respect to w, it's going to be your x. But then if you're finding um, a derivative of a more complex, maybe let's say of a quad quadratic function wx squared, then it's not going to be just w again, but it's going to be something else. So, yeah. Similar to the previous one. Yeah. What advice to a person that's got mathematics shift to machine learning? Yeah. Shift to machine learning. I suppose what doing like a master's in um you can you if you want to do it, um you wanna have like a, a qualification in it, you can yes go do your masters or if you have masters you can maybe look for PhD. But if you want to get some um set skills that maybe you can use in your industrial application. You can look for um, online courses, maybe to get a particular certificate that you can show, or you can just um, get your own skills online and then do practicals and then share your share your work um, on an open space, maybe create a GitHub and then write your work, put it there so people can see that you have the right skills. Yes, there are platforms for doing that. So that answers both. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so maybe thanks again. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. No problem. Yeah. Okay, thank you for joining. Bye. An example or real life application of machine learning, maybe in the banking that I personally have um came across with on it was um when I was doing trying to apply for a loan. So when you apply for like a loan, typically or traditionally, you'll have to maybe either physically go to a bank, fill in some detail and then get feedback or you fill in your details online and then you wait for a response when um, that application get allocated to a specific person. But then if machine learning is involved, you fill in the application and then the information you, you fill in, it gets sent to a, a machine learning model and then it, and then it gives like a, a prediction output whether um, your given input based on the model, can they give you like a pre-approval um, pre of, of the loan or do they um, reject your, 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 your application? By, and by the time you, you log out, you know that at least you got a pre-approval and then it's, it's going to get obviously um, being passed to a human to, to make sure that um, the machine learning didn't make some some maybe maybe gave a loan to a person who does not qualify for a loan, but then it does give you like a pre-qualification or it either accept or decline based on the information that you have provided about yourself. Okay, thank you everyone. Bye. Thanks for joining. Bye.